Good morning, folks. Let's start with a great article today out of Astrobiology magazine. It's based off recent papers published in Science, and it's got shades of star water. In addition to excellent explanations of the survey equipment, they describe a lot of water-equivalent hydration. And they've concluded it is not left over from ancient Mars. It's currently found and constantly coming down in the atmosphere. Observers, please recall the electrochemical combination potential for atmospheric oxygen when it meets solar hydrogen. Let's quickly look at the flattened Earth. Get the wind at the surface levels, then up just beneath the jet stream where the pressure plays second fiddle to the larger flows, and the epitome of that macro level flow is visible in the upper stratosphere. Let's wrap the world around a sphere, come in on the Indian Ocean. Amara and Bruce have continued to get closer and closer together. If Bruce doesn't catch that eastern current soon, the storms are going to collide. More severe weather reported in the UK. When Dr. Elliott suggested the solar magnetic shutdown I've watched for two years would begin to make winter climate extremely harsh, I thought he meant like next decade, but this is the third storm in a row to have above average power as it hits the east side of the pond. RSOE reporting major power outage in Argentina but also a major heat wave. You can see the air delivered from the equator there. In the US, a large low is yanking straight north on the east edge while sliding colder air down the western side to converge. The severe weather in the U.S. continued again last night, and the cold brought down on the back side of these lows is again beyond what humans should have to deal with. Last weather note, remember, we're only a few days away from the tropical hazard watches shifting to Australia. Looking at the solar wind, it shows calm with a density spike at the end. It's early and today will tell if this is a leading density shock to a coronal hole stream or an independent shock. Looks minor either way. So here we are. Six or seven M-class solar flares in the last 24 hours, and we have not seen the SDO images in a while. This is longer than normal lag, so I checked their blog, and NASA has made a statement. There's an emergency problem with the SDO. The AIA and the HMI images will not be updating, but the EVE will continue. It's a failure that is in current diagnosis, and they do not, I repeat, do not have an expected fix time. Long story short, we're on our own using the tools I shared yesterday, which I relinked again today. Of all the flares that we did have, we've yet to see major CMEs. It's a good thing. Using cactus to get in close, we see a few small and moderate eruptions, but none of the flares we've had are too bad yet. Let's thank the solar magnetic shutdown for that. NASA's endless spiral sees fit to ignore all but one tiny western limb eruption. NOAA's doesn't have any big CMEs at all. Let's use the stereo spacecraft. Not much visible on stereo A. Stereo B does indeed show ejecta coming in Earth's direction. Just one, it's not big. And honestly, it might even be that incoming limb event from a new sunspot group. This is Proba 2 coming up big right now. I'll show the other sun images we do have at the close. The northern coronal hole is on his way out, but with major power rising in the magnetic force. The field is going to allow that sliver to remain open today, it appears combined with planets and the pressure for the watch. Canary Islands have taken their largest uptick in more than six months, and it's not done yet. There were definitively more earthquakes in the central and western U.S. yesterday than normal. And look at the western Pacific, locational upticks. The global watch score holding at 6 to 7, these areas have a local score of 8, the first such rating of December. Shots of our star without SDO to close, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.